Hello friends, myself Dr. Taruna Bunsal, Assistant Professor, Department of Geography, Jamia Milia Islamia. Today I will be talking of uh, talking on spatial distribution of languages and dialects in India. As we all know that language is very important, especially in a country like India, which is often termed as the land of linguistic pluralism. This is why because here number of languages and dialects are spoken, but this may not be a correct description as the present uh, prevailing situation in India is not so pluralistic, but is that of a continuum. One dialect merges into the other almost under, undetectably or unnoticeably. One language replaces the other gradually and along the line of interface between the two dialects or languages, there is a zone of transition in which people are bilingual. In other words, languages do not exist in watertight compartments or in tight administrative boundaries. Rather, there is a state of mutual existence of several dialects or languages in a contiguous space. The nature of linguistic diversity in India was first observed by Sir George Abraham Greeson in his linguistic survey of India conducted towards the end of the 19th century where he identified 179 languages and 544 dialects in India. Similarly, in 1961 census, uh, it recorded 187 languages and found that 94 out of 187 languages were spoken by a very small population where not even 10,000 people were speaking it. Which means that in 1961, about 97% of the country's population was just affiliated with 23 languages. The di diversity of dialects and languages is a reality which cannot be ignored. Moreover, it is the, no, not the numerical strength of a speaker of a language which is important. What is more important is the fact that there are people who claim a certain language as their mother tongue. The development of a script is another related progress which contributed to linguistic diversity in our country. Different Indian languages were written in different scripts. In other words, with the development of a script, our oral communication is supplemented by a more powerful form of written communication. In the course of time, some of the minor dialects or languages groups have lost their identity as they have assimilated with developed languages. A study of historical linguistics reveal that India has gone through a different phases of language development and the present linguistic map of India is a product of these historical developments. Now, what is language and dialect and how language and dialect is regarded as a system of communication which distinguishes human being from the rest of the animal kingdom. It was through language that communication between different members of a human group started in the early stages of social evolution. Language thus facilitated multiple forms of human cooperation. A structured language was the invention of the human mind and the most effective tool of communication. In the course of time, several speech communities are formed, each occupying a chunk of a geographically contiguous space as shown in figure 1. Each language eventually expands over a territory homogeneous in terms of a language structure that is vocal sounds, words, sentences, conventions, symbols. When a language is written in a script, it lends to it tends to stabilize its distinguishing features and promotes communication over long distances between people. India as a linguistic area. Here what I try, what I uh, tend to explain is how India is called a land of ling languages or is a linguistic area. Now that is because India's unity as a socio-linguistic area is quite impressive in spite of the widely perceived linguistic diversity that exists in a country. Several, several linguistics have analyzed the basic elements of India as a social a linguistic area. For example, Khup Chandani in 1975 described language as an autonomous system and recognized the major characteristics of the speech forms of modern India. He opines that each region in a country is characterized by the plurality of not only cultures but of languages too. With a unique mosaic of verbal experience, 
he stated that India presents a striking example of the process of diffusion through its modern languages, be it grammatical or phonetic. Some of the basic elements of India's linguistic unity can be seen in the nature of language boundaries as they are usually fuzzy. Moreover, there exists fluidity in the language identity and complementarity of intergroup and intragroup communication. Here, reference may also be made in the seminal work of Murray, 1956, who analyzed the characteristics of India as a region of languages. While tracing the process of development of the Indo-Aryan and the Dravidian languages, he evaluated the shared experiences of the different speech communities. Emmanuel defines linguistic area as an area which includes languages belonging to more than one family but sharing traits in common which are found not to belong to other members of one of the families. Geographic patterning of languages in India. Now, Before we proceed, we just need to understand one thing that in India, the geographical patterning of languages is important as I said that you know the, diff the languages are not contained in watertight compartments. There is a continuum. So to understand that continuum, we need to study how the languages are patterned geographically or spatially or are regular or what is the location of each language that needs to be understood to understand why we call India a land of linguistic pluralism or India a land of languages. The geographic patterning of languages in the South Asian subcontinent can perhaps be understood in the context of the space relations the region had with other parts of Asia. The overland connections with West and Central Asia, Tibet, China and other regions of Southeast Asia helped the process of infiltration of linguistic influences into the South Asian region. This is evident from the fact that the languages spoken in the peripheral regions of South Asia such as Baluchistan, Pakistan, Afghanistan, borderlands, Kashmir and Ladakh as well as in the hilly parts of Himachal Pradesh has strong affinity with the languages spoken in the regions beyond the Hindu Kush mountains. The remote Himalayan region in the northeast became the abode of Tibeto Chinese or Sino Tibetese languages and was strongly influenced by the neighboring parts of Myanmar, Thailand, and Indochina. The people of the plains of North India from Sindh to Assam are dominated by the different branches of the Indo European family of languages. The peninsular region continued to retain the Dravidian speech forms even though the north was completely swayed over by the Indo European languages. Between the Indo-European and the Dravidian one finds the ostrich speaking tribes nested in the hills of the mid-Indian region. The linguistic heterogeneity of India can perhaps be brought to some order when one realizes that speeches really belong to four languages family. These are number one, Sino-Tibetan or the Tibetan Burman, Astro-Asiatic, third is the Dravidian and fourth is the Indo-European. Their geographical patterning throws some light on the routes through which these language families reach in India. In fact, despite the vast heterogeneity, Indian languages experienced parallel trends in linguistic and literary development through the long phases of shared history. This has made India a composite region in terms of linguistic attributes or linguistic plurality. Classification of Indian languages. India is a country characterized with continuity and vastness with great linguistic variations. History has shown that over the period people from different periodic line came and settled here resulting in the mixing of cultures. This further led to the amalgamation of their languages as well as dialects. As a result, in present times, people from different cultures, races, classes live in different areas of the nation speaking various languages and dialects. These languages can be broadly divided into the following four families. 
The classification is based on the number of people speaking languages and dialects in each family. This is further explained in table 1 and figure 2. We start with the Indo-European family which is called Aryan. The second one is the Dravidian family called Dravida. The third is Austric family called Nishada. And the fourth is the Sino-Tibetan family called Kirate. The most important family in India is the Aryan family both numerically as well as culturally. Nearly 73% of the population in India either speaks language or dialect belonging to this family. Nearly 20% of the population speaks languages of the Dravidian family. A very small percentage of the population speaks the language and dialects belonging to either Austric or the Sino-Tibetan family. Now we will discuss each of these families in detail. I start with the Aryan family. The Aryan family is the most important of all the families of languages in the India. In the Aryan family, we have nearly three-fourths of the Indian population which is speaking this. This family can be clearly segregated into the two branches, the Dardic languages and the Indo-Aryan languages. The Dardic languages. Under the Dardic branch of languages are those languages which are present are spoken among the mountain communities of Kashmir outside India. These languages are spoken by people residing in the frontiers between Pakistan, Afghanistan. This branch can be further classified into three sub-branches. Sheena, which includes Kashmiri Sheena and proper Kohisan. Chatran or Khawar or Chetrili. And the third one is Kafulistan. Dialects Sheena and Kashmiri along with some dialects allied to Kashmiri are spoken in Kashmir. And it appears that the Kashmiri is the base of Dardic Aryan dialect. In view of the most of the scholars, Dardic is mere a branch of Indo-Aryan as these Dardic dialects are largely on the edge of extinction. The only recognized national language of the Indian Union is Kashmiri spoken by at least 20 lakh people. The Indo-Aryan languages. This is the branch of the Aryan family which includes Hindi, Bengali or Bangla, Punjabi, Rajasthani, Gujarati, Kachi, Sindhi, Marathi, Oriya, Sanskrit, Assamese and Urdu. On the basis of the percentage of population speaking the language under this branch they have been classified into the following categories. Northern Aryan languages which are languages which belong to the dialects uh, spoken to the hilly people in North India which includes Nepali, Central Pahari, Western Pahari Aryan languages. Northwestern Aryan where we have Khanda, Khan, Kachi, Sindhi and uh, which are spoken by the people living in the northwestern part of the country. Then we have Southern Aryan languages where Marathi and Konkani are part. Now, apart from these, we also have Eastern Aryan languages where we have Bihari, Oriya, Bangla, Assamese language. In East Aryan, uh, rather East Central, we have Avadh, Bundelkhand, Chhattisgarh regions where we have languages like uh, Bugheli, Avadhi, Chhattisgarhi and uh, their dialects. Central Aryan languages uh, have languages like Hindi, Punjabi, Rajasthani and Alawadi. Among the languages in the Aryan family, Hindi is the most important language spoken by a huge number of people. In every state of India, people speaking Hindi can be found as even the illiterate can speak and communicate in Hindi. Now we come to the second family which is uh, popularly known as the Dravidian family. The Dravidians entered India much before the Aryans. The languages in the Dravidian family are considered older than the languages of the Aryan family. In present times, the languages in this family are well knit among themselves, unlike the families of the Aryans, the Austric or the Sino-Tibetan. Another significant feature or characteristics of family is that it does not have any relation outside the Indian subcontinent. The languages of the Dramidian family can be categorized into several groups but are usually branched into two subgroups. The one is called the North Dravidian and the other is the South Dravidian languages. Among the North Dravidian languages, we mainly include Telugu and a number of other dialects like Orao, Gondi, Malir, Kant, Kul or 
Parji. Numerically, the most important of all the languages and dialects is Telugu, which has a very rich literature as the vocabulary is also influenced. And it is mainly because, uh, you know, this language has been influent, influenced by Sanskrit. And unlike the, unlike the other languages and dialects under this tree, it spread to countries in South Africa or even in Myanmar and some parts of Indo-China. So rather than you know, uh, rather than uh, you know, taking things from outside Indian subcontinent, Telugu has come uh, up as a language which has spread outside India. So this is one of the major difference between a Aryan and a Dravidian, especially Telugu language. Now we talk of South Dravidian language. Here we have Tamil, Kannada, Malayalam, and along with the dialects of Tulu, Kote, or Kurgal and Tota. Now, in, among these, uh, Tamil is spoken mainly in Tamil Nadu and even by a large population in Sri Lanka. The significant characteristics of this particular language is that it has been able to preserve its old Dravidian character and that too in its original form. Another important language is Malayalam, which is basically spoken in uh, Kerala and Lakshwadip. Although it has its origin in the old Tamil language and dates back around 1500 years, it could carve out its own path during the early 20th, 10th century and it established itself as an independent language by 15th century. The influence of Sanskrit has been more on Malayalam than any other language of India. Kannada is spoken in Karnataka and has witnessed three stages of development old Kannada up to 13th century then we have medieval Kannada which was followed or uh, spoken till 16th century and we have Hosa Kannada which is the Kannada language of the present day now we have the third family called the Austric family it is basically a family which belongs to the Austric Asian subfamily of the world this family can be divided into two branches Munda or Kol languages or Mon Khamur languages now if we discuss the Munda languages this is branch of languages is a prime branch among the Austric family consisting of 14 tribal languages. The Kherwari in the eastern part of the country, especially in Chotanagpur, Orissa, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, is the major sub branch. It further includes Bhumaj, then we have Korwa, Santhali, Ho, Kurku. These are some of the dialects or languages like you know Santhali, Mundari, Ho are uh, which are there, which have preserved their literature through mythological romantic stories as well as songs. Now in the more Khmer language, we have two further sub-branches. One is called Nicobari, the other is Khasi. The Nicobari language is spoken by the people residing in Nicobar Islands, while Khasi uh, is a, tri a tribal language uh, which is spoken by people of Meghalaya. Now, now the fourth uh, and the last family, that's the Sino-Tibetan family. Now, this can be grouped into three main branches: the Tibeto-Himalayan, North Assam, and Assam, Mani, uh, Myanmari, or Burmese. Now, when we speak of Tibeto-Himalayan language, this is a branch of Sino-Tibetan family, as I already stated, but which can be divided into the Himalayan and the Bhutia group. The Himalayan group can consists of Chamba, Laholi, Kinnori, Lepcha while uh, you know and in this Kannori is the most widely spoken language and if we talk of the Bhutia group we have Laholi, Sherpa, Tibetan, Ladakhi and Sikkim Bhutia. Now here Ladakhi has the num largest number of speakers it is followed by Sikkim Bhutia and the Tibetese language. Now in the North Assam language branch uh, we which is also called the Arunachal branch we have languages like Abor, Mishmi, uh, Mishing and Miri, uh, Miri has the largest number of speakers. In the Assam Myanmari language, we have Boro or Bodo, Naga uh, Myanmari language and the largest language spoken is Naga. Besides the above mentioned three branches, this family also has some other significant languages like Tripuri, uh, Manipuri, Garo, Lusai which is spoken in Mizo. Now ling linguistic regions. Now, if we if we see, you know, if you actually because I've not discussed what I'm trying to dis, uh, uh, you know, sh tell you in this uh, in this lecture, I'll just tell you what I have done. Uh, see, what we have done is we have first started at why India is called a land of languages. Why do we need to study languages in India? Because as I again again said that India is a land of linguistic 
pluralism. So we defined that why India is called a land of linguistic pluralism. Then we defined how languages can be classified on the basis of their spatial location or spatial patterning. Now we have linguistic regions that means on the basis of languages how different religions uh, sorry different regions have been carved out or delineated and that is why India as a linguistic region. The linguistic survey conducted between 1903 and 1926 showed that there are 179 languages and 544 spoken dialects. The survey was, con as already said, the survey was conducted under the leadership of George Grayson and he said that the languages has developed over time. It was only in the first time 1965 census, 61 census that information was collected for languages and the figure shows that in India 187 languages were spoken as already as I have already told you the percentage. The 8th schedule of the constitution of India has specified 22 languages in the in addition to English, these are Assamese, Bengali, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannad, Kashmiri, Konkani, Malayalam, Manipuri, Marathi, Nepali, Odia, Punjabi, Sanskrit, Sindhi, Tamil, Telugu, Urdu, Bodo, Santhali, Maithili and Dogri, Nepali, Konkani, Nepali. Konkani and Manipuri were added by a parliamentary act on 28th August 1992, while in 2004 Bodo, Dogri, Mathali, Santhali were added. Interestingly, after independence, the formation of states in India has also been done on the base of languages. This added a political flavor or dimension to the spatial pattern of languages in India. The languages and dialects of the tribal country, uh, population of the northeastern, eastern and central parts of the country are not part of the spatial pattern as observed in the other parts of the country. Now this is basically because of two reasons. One, the number of tribal languages and dialects varies. Secondly, the people speaking in languages or dialects live in unspecified regions or areas. In all, there are 12 major languages which are widely spoken in India and they are based uh, and based on the spatial distrib distribution, 12 linguistic states can be demarcated which has been shown in table 2 and figure 3. Now, before I conclude, you know, I would like to say two points which you should take into consideration before studying languages, especially in context of India. Number one, a difference between a language and a dialect. You know, number of three or four dialects may, may form a language, but you cannot say that dialect is a, f a part of language. The only difference is that dialect does not have its own script, while a language has a well-defined script. So whenever you are studying, you know, you can refer to the figure one which I have given in the text, which clearly shows what is the difference between a language and a dialect. So. Uh, Again and again I have mentioned language dialect. So you know you should have a clear understanding of a difference between language and dialect. Secondly, when we are talking of linguistic regions, you see I have mentioned 13 states or 12 states. Now here it means that when we are talking of linguistic regions in India, they are you know complementing the administrative boundaries. Reason being the reorganization of states in India after independence has been based on languages. So languages, if we talk of agroclimatic regions or any other regionalization of uh, uh, in India, be it natural regions or economic regions, we see administrative boundaries more or less have not been taken into consideration. But when we talk of linguistic regions in India, we see administrative boundaries have been taken into consideration. This is mainly because states have been carved out on the basis of languages states have been carved out on the basis of languages which people speak in that but that means the state is a language is a homogeneous in this language which it is spoke, speaking and it is you know if, if we if we can see the difference you know like as haryana was carved out of punjab on the basis that haryana in haryana people speak hindi 
and in Punjab people speak Punjabi. Similarly, you see in uh, Andhra, Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh was carved out or, Chand, uh, or Karnataka, all these southern states have been, although they all belong to Dravidian family, they have been carved out because all the four, be it Malayalam, be it Telugu, be it Kannada, be it Marathi, they are well established languages with a long history. That is why the reorganization of states in India has been based on languages. Another important thing is that you know regionalization is not always uh, just to un just to classify. The important of regionalization is also there to for proper planning. So you know when we are when our reorganization when our st states are based on languages, we should understand that being a linguistic pluralistic country, we have to take into consideration even the languages which people of small proportion, for example, as I mentioned that you know tr in some cases tribal languages are not included or are not in taken into consideration. That should be avoided. Now why is this happening? Because it was only 1961 that proper census was uh, done with languages as consideration. But I think now things have changed. So now you know whenever we talk of languages even the tribal languages should be taken into consideration and we should not uh, you know keep on giving on the excuse that we do not have the data. In today's modern world data you can be easily uh, it can be easily uh, you know collected and information can be gathered because these languages and dialects do have history and they are somehow defining our cultural you know cultural organization cultural history of our country be it of minor importance but they should not be ignored thank you